Hello and welcome to Improving Scottish Football. My name is Kieran, and today on the podcast we are talking league reconstruction. This is a proper deep dive episode into how it could actually work. You know, this isn't some sort of vague, oh, wouldn't it be nice to expand the top flight and shift all the leagues around? We're going to explain how we could actually do it, how the maths would work. So, hey, you know, if you like maths, you're in for an absolute treat. Um, but seriously, what, you know, what is best? Is it a 14 team, 16 team top flight, 18, 20? How do the leagues look below that? Do we keep the split? The man answering all these questions is Graham Taylor. He is a data analyst and has a master's in sports management. So Graham is going to present some options that would actually work. And we're also going to talk about countries in Europe who already have 14 team and 16 team top flights. And we're going to show how they already do it successfully. All of this is to add drama and excitement to the SPFL. Please do like, share and subscribe. Uh, And hey, you know, if you're enjoying the podcast, maybe you could even leave a review. A big thanks to everyone who's listening already. And for those who have sent me nice messages, I've had lots of lovely messages of support. Uh, So I really appreciate it. Let's keep building momentum. Let's improve Scottish football. Okie dokie. Right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. I am delighted to be joined today by Graham Taylor. Graham, how are you? Doing very well. Thank you, Kieran. Thank you for having me on. Good. Well, I'm delighted you've uh, agreed to come on. So um, for those who don't know, can you just give us a bit of an introduction to yourself and your connection to Scottish football? Yep, of course. So these days, my connection to Scottish football is just avid fan. Um, but uh, I am a two-time graduate from the University of Stirling, so I've got a degree in sports studies and a master's in sport management. Um, with my master's dissertation, I did a cost-benefit analysis of a Scottish football youth academy. Uh, from that work, it led to uh, a position at the university as a research assistant, so I've done work for the Scottish FA, uh, other national governing bodies for sport as well, but that then got me involved with Supporters Direct Scotland where again I did some voluntary research work for them and then I also took on a voluntary research role with Falkirk Football Club for a project that they were working on at the time. So as I say these days I'm just a fan but every now and again I I get struck with a bolt of insanity and work on a personal project such as trying to find a solution to league reconstruction. Nice good well that's a good segue yes into into the into the topic at hand Um, and you're a you're a, a data analyst as well in your in your day job, so that hopefully right, yes. gives gives us a, a you, you know you've got a good uh, background in your day job that will hopefully help us with um, with this topic. That's the theory, yeah. That's the theory, <laughs> and of course, I first came across you is well, I was posting on Twitter, I think, about league reconstruction, and for the first time I've ever seen this happen on Twitter. Uh, you somebody sent me a spreadsheet, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a spreadsheet on Twitter. Um, so that might be the first and last time, but it was very useful because, you know, I think like many people, I think you know a bigger league, you know, a little a little bit of reconstruction would go a long way, but it's the mathematics of it and how it would actually work and what is the best system that I kind of struggle with because, um, well, maths isn't my strong suit so um a nice orderly spreadsheet was was much appreciated yeah as i say insanity takes over and that's why i send strangers excel spreadsheets on the internet (laughs) um so in this podcast we are going to be exploring different ways that we can uh, reconstruct the spfl we're going to present a few different options and we're going to, I guess, focus on the easiest to change first. In in theory, uh, yeah. in theory, it's easiest to change, i.e. the smallest change. You know, this is up to maybe a 14 top flight. Then we'll look at expanding the top flight to 16. And then towards the end of the podcast, we'll probably touch on 18, 20, although obviously that sort of change would inevitably be quite tricky to get through. So, yeah. so Graham, can you just give us, 
an overview of how you would see a a 14 team top flight working yep so the way i see it working is that you would end up with 14 teams across three divisions so you'd have your premiership your championship and then league one or call it a national league whatever you want to call it but essentially we're working with three divisions of a similar structure you'd have your 14 teams and you'd play each other twice once home once away that'll give you your 26 games uh going into a split once you get into your split then you break up into two groups of seven and then you'd play another round of games home and away for another 12 games bringing you up to 38. Uh, this would be replicated across all the divisions which is kind of what's different just now currently obviously the split only is in the premiership but we would expand expand this into the the three different tiers the way i've got it set up in the spreadsheet is as well that you would have two teams would get automatically relegated from each division and that includes uh from tier three into tier four have we choose to split that um but you'd also have a playoff spot so whoever finishes 12th out of 14th would then enter the relegation playoff and would go against teams three four and five from the division below so you'd then get an extra round of games then hmm yeah, I think there is a huge consensus out there among supporters that they want to see more fluidity between all the divisions. Yeah. Um, the playoffs have obviously been like hugely successful. Everyone loves them, um, so you don't want to you don't want to lose that for sure. So you know it's obviously good we keep the playoffs, but I think yeah, adding another relegation place into every in, into every division is 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 great. And I also love the fact that yeah, between tiers or between tier tier three and then into like the Lowland League or Highland League, having two teams being able to come up and two teams going out is is great because that's, you know, it, it's such a ridiculous situation at the moment. It's so difficult for any club to actually get into the into the SPFL. Absolutely. And, and when you actually look at it, I don't think any of the teams that have been promoted into League Two from the Highland or Lowland League have gone back down. And in fact, none of the teams that have been relegated have managed to come back in to the professional league setup. So it's not as if it's an easy division to get out of. So to have a team that wins either the Highland or the Lowland not be able to get promoted because they lose a playoff game after that seems a bit of a shame. And there's obviously a lot of really good teams in the uh, the Highland and Lowland league setup, like outside of the SPFL. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, some of those teams are... Uh, well on their on their day could give um could give uh certainly like league one league two clubs a really good run for their money if not kind of championship clubs there's 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 a lot of strength down there so and let's not forget darville managed to beat aberdeen in the scottish cup last year so it's not as if it's all uh, all an easy day very uh, true playing those lower teams yeah very true um okay so 14 14 14 um, and you've currently, you know, just popped the kind of the split in. Um, so you'd have a top seven and then you'd have a bottom seven. That's I guess right. a, a slight issue with that is you would probably have to have a team sitting out every um, week. But the other thing I guess you could do is you could have like a top, a top six and a bottom eight, for example, or a top eight and a bottom six or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as I say, this is just my 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 insanity coming through, essentially. It's just kind of split. It's an arbitrary split. You could do six and eight. The other way we could look at it, if you stuck with the seven, seven, actually, is it could just be that one team is getting a Tuesday off um, between games. Because I think currently in the split, you get like a Tuesday game, a Saturday game, a Tuesday, Saturday, and it plays a, as a lot of games getting compacted. Ah. Uh -huh. And you end up, again, there's higher risk of injury, et cetera. So it could just give teams uh, a rest, and like one week off or a, se a session off, a match day off even, uh, yeah. to give them a player a chance to recover. Okay. Yeah, they, uh, that, that, makes, that makes a lot more sense. I was thinking it would be like Saturday than Saturday and stuff. But yeah, I forget. Yeah, when the split comes around, it's, it's a busy time of year. Um, so yeah, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Now the obviously adding those extra relegation places puts in more jeopardy uh it definitely creates more excitement um i guess 
for teams, you know, who might be at the top end of the bottom half of that split, I guess there might be a question of, is there enough to play for, you know, if, if they're far enough away from the relegation places, but, you know, you could potentially offer some sort of incentive to, you know, the team who finishes, you know, top of that bottom half of the split. Um, I think you're probably going to come onto this anyway in, in, in the 16 version, yeah. but potentially there could be a route to somehow qualifying for the, for the conference league or something. Yep. A wee spoiler alert for the next league that we're going to look into, but absolutely. Um, what you could do is something that I put into the, the 16 uh, top tier, 16 team top tier, well, and we'll discuss it later, is you give that bottom group or that group there, if you give the team that finishes eighth, they can get the lowest available European spot. So they'll come in at the early stages of qualifying. What it means is, sure, they're missing out on a little bit of prize money, but there's still something to play for. It's something that I remember. I spoke to George Craig when I was doing my um, uh, my master's dissertation. He, I think he's at Hibs now. Um, but he was talking about one of the things that Scottish football needs. You need to be able to create drama. And the example he used was darts. Now, darts, depending on your view of it, potentially not the most exciting sport to watch but if you look at the occasion that they create they build the drama they get like all the chanting the, they get the crowd involved and things like that but it's the drama element that's often missing from scottish football i feel because every year essentially if you're deciding between two teams really who's going to win the the top division um and it doesn't feel as exciting you could argue if you're not a fan of one of those two teams mm. So do something a bit different, throw in a throw in a, a, a lifeline for Europe um, for a team that's maybe finishing top, reward the team that wins out that, that second group. Mm. And this option, obviously, that you've, you've laid out um, uh, isn't, you know, completely off the wall or anything like that. When you actually look around Europe at what other countries are doing, a lot of them do have setups that are 12, 14, 16, and a lot of them have interesting splits. So yeah, I've spent the past few days having a bit of a random Google on, um, <laughs> you know, the Bulgarian top flight, et cetera. Um, but uh, I stumbled across one, obviously, that's, that, that, that's, that's very similar to what you're proposing here for the 14, 14, 14, which is Greece. So what Greece do, um, yeah, remarkably similar. They have, they split after two games. So everyone plays 26 games. Uh, then they have a top six and then a bottom eight. The top six play each other twice, which uh, then results in a total of 36 games. Then the bottom eight just play each other once more for uh, a total of 33. I mean, you could, you could, get everyone to play twice more and, and take it up to 40. Yep. <laughs> I think that's right. Yeah. If my math, my math works. Um, but they do, yeah, that they, are, they have that incentive for the lower half of the split. So whoever comes out at the top of that bottom eight, they play off against, I think whoever finishes fifth overall for entry into the conference league. You know, so so there there still creates that excitement, still creates that drama. You know that we're that we're talking about. So, you know, what we're proposing here isn't ridiculous. It's actually being used at, 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 in a in a good league in Europe already. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's that's one of the things you kind of have to look at, right? Um, one of the one of the big things about reconstruction is it's going into the unknown, right? And a lot of people maybe have the this philosophy of better the devil you know. But if you can see that something different, and if you just try and take the best elements of leagues that do something similar to what we're proposing, you see that there's a good quality of team coming out of Greece. Um, and, I mean, relative, do relatively well in Europe, you could argue. So, I mean, why not? give it a shot you know there's got to be something that we can learn from these other leagues um to try and bring some more drama back to scottish football i'd like to take just a quick break from this podcast to give a shout out to my partners at nutmeg 
Now, Nutmeg is the Scottish football periodical published every three months. It's a high-class home for articles about Scottish football's past, present and future. There's a special introductory offer uh, and on their website you'll find quality writing taken from the print magazine. It's well worth checking out. Visit nutmegmagazine.co.uk Also, for a bit of fun on the side, if you play Fantasy Football Scotland, please join the Improving Scottish Football League and if you play FPL for the English Premier League, you can join our league as well. The code is in the show notes. And now, back to the episode. Okay, right. We've done our four. We've done our fourteens. Uh, let's let's move on to a sixteen-team uh, top flight, please, Graham. Yep. So this is actually my preferred uh, option for league reconstruction. This is the one that, whenever the topic comes up on Twitter, the the person that starts the post gets a copy of the spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> but this is my preferred option. Um, Although, ironically, I actually think that we've got too many teams in the professional setups. I think 42 for a, a country of Scotland size is maybe too many. Ironically, then, I'm suggesting we add two more um, and go with a 16-14-14 setup. Okay, so again, you've got Premiership, Championship, National League One, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the Championship and the National League we'll just call it just now, would still be 14 teams in those divisions. The Premiership, however, you'd have a, a league of 16, and you would play uh, each team home and away, which would bring you up to 30 games, before you then break into another split. But instead of just a, a split down the middle at eight teams, I'm proposing that we go with uh, three splits. And so you'd have the the championship group, which would be the top five teams. You then have the relegation group, which would be the bottom five teams. And then you've got the middle group, and that would be made up of six teams. So teams six to 11 would make up that middle group. Obviously, your top five playing out for the title. And uh, based on this year's um, European placements, you'd get uh, teams one and two, going into the Champions League qualifying. Team three would get Europa League, and team four would go into the European Conference League. That middle six, you are fighting for that European Conference spot, as we just mentioned in the last. So again, you're creating something for them to play for, uh, something for them to play for. And then the bottom five, obviously going for relegation. And again, it's two teams getting automatically relegated and one entering into a playoff with teams three, four, and five from tier two. After the split, again, you are looking at home and away. So that brings the top five and the bottom five to a total of 38 games. And the middle six will then play a total of 40 games. So in that middle group, you could argue that the lost revenue from missing out on an extra old firm game they're getting two extra games a year. That can make up some of the gate receipt, maybe not all, but again, the lure of Europe can then cover the, win the, cover the, the, the gap there. But the reason I went for top five, middle six, bottom five, is because we've got that 14 team tier two, when you do their split, you're still looking at 38 games in tier two, and that means the bottom five in the Premiership would also be on 38 games. So it makes sure that everything's on an even keel when they go into those playoffs. So you can't argue that oh, a bottom six, they've played two extra games, they're more tired than the teams in Tier 2. You keep everything level, keep everything as even as possible to give everybody a fair shot for that final spot for the Premiership. Hmm. Yeah, and of course that did happen to Partick Thistle. Obviously, you know, in the season just gone, they just they just they were forced to play so many games. Um, so this is a really exciting option. Um, yeah, splitting it in three. So top five, bottom five, and then a middle six. So obviously, if people haven't even heard of this option before, because it's generally something that's not overly discussed, splitting, splitting in three, you know, they might have a few questions like, yeah, what is there for that middle six really to be playing for? Because, 
yes, obviously you can put the Europa Conference League in there as a reward. But, I, you know, I, I would say, and I'm sure obviously you're probably about to say this anyway, having that breathing room, having those clubs there who, who will effectively be safe from, from relegation might actually give them a chance to play some youngsters to kind of hone their style of play and it might take away a bit of the pressures that managers face because everyone you know just seems to be so focused on and obviously i get it right it's sport focused on not losing there's such such high pressure to win at all costs whereas actually if you have these teams there that are effectively you know safe they might be able to focus on some some other priorities yeah definitely and obviously with my uh, master's dissertation having been on a professional football youth academy i've got a real strong interest in youth development and it's one of these things that you don't really see enough of i mean when when i did my dissertation it was actually one of the things i saw from my research was that once you drop out of the top division you see uh an increased not reliance but an increased willingness say to play those younger players and that's not just in scotland that the the examples i was reading about was like when newcastle got relegated to the championship they actually brought through a lot more of their academy players um, and gave those youngsters a chance to play and it helped develop them a lot more than when they got to the premiership they were actually still playing in the team um it helps build up that shared team experience which as you move on to another season if everybody knows how everybody plays it can help improve performance in the long term but then also we're trying to, as, as the podcast is called, improve Scottish football. A good way is to help uh, help with that pathway on youth development. And I believe there was an episode that you did about that as well um, on how we could improve uh, youth development within Scottish football. I see this as a way that kind of helps with that. Um, as you say, that middle six, they're completely safe. Yes, they are playing for that, that one Europe spot potentially. The other benefit, long-term benefit for your your club into, uh, from a sporting point of view is that you're helping bring along some of your youngsters and, again, getting that shared team experience that can help you the following season push for the top five, that championship group. Yeah. And the other thing that's probably just worth mentioning, um, I guess the, one of the reasons to split it into three um, with a 16 top flight is the fact that it does retain four Celtic and Rangers games, assuming they finish in the, <laughs> assuming they finish in the top five, yeah, it will ensure that Celtic and Rangers continue to play each other four times a season because, like it or not, it is what the broadcasters want. So, you know that that's a big that's a big reason for this, um, as opposed to just having just a regular you know split in two or not having a split at all in a 16 top flight you'd probably only end up with Celtic and Rangers playing two or three times a season yeah I mean un unfortunately it's just the state of our game just now um there is that I I'm going to call it an over alliance on those four old firm games um in terms of the, any sort of television deal um again I think there's other ways that you can can secure four games without it necessarily being in the league, i.e. you could introduce a charity shield, which again, nine times out of 10 is probably going to be the old firm playing each other. Okay. Uh, but there are other ways you could do it. But I think in terms of the league right now, that's what the broadcasters are asking for. This keeps that in place, but it also brings another dimension. And again, it's one that, like, again, I didn't just pluck a group, like a, a split into three, out of thin air i did a little bit of research at the time i mean i first came up with this back during the pandemic obviously looking for something to do um and i think at the time the belgian leagues were doing something similar um they were splitting into three at the time and it was that middle group was playing for a european spot to help uh keep those games exciting so yeah. it, again it could work if it works for belgium i mean they've obviously got a very strong national team how much of that is down to the league tough to say but they've obviously got a good pathway for developing players they've got a strong league like us they are next to another big market nation with the bundesliga so 
it, but it worked for them. So why not try it here? Yeah. And their coefficient is absolutely brilliant. Their clubs are smashing it in Europe. Um, I think they're, well, they're, I think they're seventh or eighth in, in the coefficient at the moment, but I mean, they're only going, they're only going up the way. So yeah, difficult to say how, how much the, the league structure is, is helping. Um, again, I'm going to do a similar thing to what I did with the 14s, and I'm going to read out a couple of examples uh, from from Europe that are already doing similar to to kind of what you're what you're putting forward. So, Bulgaria and the Czech Republic, um, they have got a 16 top flight. They're doing they're playing each other twice for for 30 games, then they split into a top six a middle four and a bottom six um, and the and the middle four playoff for the conference league. So that is very similar to what you're proposing. The only difference is you're going for five, then six, then five, and they're doing six, four, six, um, you know, kind of same difference really. And then Romania, they are similar, but they have um, a top six and then a bottom 10. And the bottom ten only play each other once, as opposed to the you know the top six playing each other twice. And the and whoever finishes top of the bottom ten, I guess again gets to qualify for the conference league. So there you go. Those those are those are some good examples again of other other countries doing this sort of system. Uh, and then. Belgium. Yes, you mentioned Belgium. Belgium. Now, it did take me a while to get my head around what the hell was going on with Belgium because they keep on they keep on changing it. Um yeah. I'm going to read out what Belgium are doing just to demonstrate that there are some pretty crazy options out there that we could do and also to demonstrate that what we're proposing, what you're proposing actually isn't that crazy when you compare it to what Belgium are doing. So, here we go. So Belgium have got a 16 team top flight. They play they play each other twice for 30 games. At that point, all their points are halved. And if you end up on a a point 5, you get rounded up. The top 6 then play each other twice more for a total of 40 games and obviously um you know, whoever wins that obviously wins uh, wins the championship. The teams that are ranked, yeah, this is where it gets crazy. The teams that finish seventh to sixteenth in the league are joined by the top six teams from the second division, and everyone there is divided into four groups of four. Then the winners of those groups play off against each other, and whoever wins. Those playoffs will play whoever finished fifth in the top six for a chance to enter the conference league. <laughs> wow. Okay, that made my head hurt. So it doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. So you can you can finish um, sixth in the second division and qualify, and qualify for, for Europe. Europe. <laughs> oh, that would be nice. Yeah. So hang on. Let's see. Who would that have been? Inverness Cali Thistle, well done. You've just qualified for the uh, Conference League in Belgium. Well done. Yeah, it's mad if you look at it, like what the equivalent would be in our division and something like that happened. I mean, because yeah. again, Cali had a really good Scottish Cup run. Why couldn't they do the same again? Or Morton, Wraith, any of these teams. But that was, again, that would create drama. Well, this is it. It's crazy, right? And people would look at it, you know, people who don't understand it in the same way that people... Some people do still don't understand the split. Again, this is mainly people down south, really. But people would look at it and just go, "Oh, what a what a stupid you know system." But the it adds drama. I mean, I'll I'll, I'll I would need to I need to sleep on it. But there's there's definitely merits in going for something like that because they've obviously designed it to to you know, to make a, to create as much excitement as possible. Yeah, absolutely. And again, it's just, it's one of those things, like it's almost, well, for us having experienced it for many years now, we, we think that the, the league's predictable. Saying that the SPFL, the premiership did appear in a top seven craziest league structures 
like alongside the San Marino two team league. And I don't think we're that crazy in comparison to what Belgium's running, but it's, it's creating the excitement. We keep saying it, creating that excitement, creating the drama, giving them something to play for is the most, it's probably the best way we're going to find to help increase the profile of our leagues. Again, you mentioned like obviously it's people down south don't understand it, but and, and unfortunately, that's one of the things that's working against us just now is because we are attached to arguably the best league in the world. They would certainly like England would certainly say the Premiership is the best league in the world, but and it's hard to get people to look north of the border, right? But Belgium doing this, they're next to the Bundesliga, right? Mm-hmm. They've got to compete with that locally but they still managed to do it and it's one of these crazy league setups that that helps with that yeah and the fact that obviously you know i can't ever see our clubs going for all their points getting chopped in half but (laughs) you know that really did work in belgium because you had three teams on the final day of the season that could uh, win the championship and of course royal antwerp won it with like the last kick of the game um what a brilliant finish um yeah and i understand it as well because by half in the points it's, it's narrowing the gap i yeah a team i think antwerp uh were third um before that split before having the points halved and as you say they they won it in the last kick of the one of the last kicks of the of the season they won the league by a point yeah. so you can see i can see the merits for it yeah okay right we best move on um to um to go even bigger because we've done 14 we've done 16 let's touch on 18 and 20 but um we'll probably spoiler alert, spoiler alert keep this section very short because as much as you know there there's a good number of fans who obviously w- would love that many clubs in 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 the top flight um it's going to be very difficult to get it through because we know how conservative Scottish football can be. And the fact that you've, you've got to try and get, um, you know, so many votes, so many clubs on side. So th- this would be a bit of a revolution, not to say it could never be achieved, but um, 14 and 16 are definitely more realistic. So uh, yeah, just, just talk us uh, briefly through the, through the 18 and 20. Yeah. So, for this so this is you could take one of two options i in my in my excel sheet i've got uh, two divisions of 20 teams thinking about it i actually think two divisions of 18 would be better and this kind of goes back to my point of i think there's potentially too many teams in the scottish professional leagues um but as you say it's quite revolutionary going 20 and 20 uh, so two divisions both of 20 teams you're already having to lose two teams that are currently in. So if say we did this transition at the end of last season, so other than uh, Albion, Albion Rovers going down, uh, Elgin would have also had to go down and Bonnie Rig Rose would have also gone down for finishing eighth and ninth. Okay. And so that's how, how you would have to do it. You'd have to have three relegation spots from the current league two system to go into a 2020 the following year. I actually prefer, I th- as I say, I think an 1818 would be better. But again, you're you're now losing another four teams mm-hmm. from the professional setup. And I think that's too many. It would be too quick. You'd have to do either a staggered approach over like three, four, five years. But again, at, at the end of the day, I don't think it's realistic. It's putting too many clubs at risk. Um, it's one of those ones uh, if if you could if you if you could make sure that anybody that went down and this is part of the thing like in my spreadsheets i've got the the pathways into the highland and the lowland and bringing those regional leagues into that full pyramid uh, and so and with more relegation spots you've got more promotion spots etc so hopefully teams could stay afloat with it but i just think it's too unrealistic but anyway just to brush over quickly what this is two divisions of 20 um then you've got three relegation spots is essentially just copying the the English Premier League with the 20s play each uh, each team play each other twice once home once away and that's you 38 games for the season done and dusted no splits 
none of that good stuff that we've grown to endure in Scotland. But uh, just really simple, clean format. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, there we go. I mean, that's that's it, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what not more much can else you say? to say about that? No, I know, and 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 it's the same within. You know, again, I had a look around Europe. All the um, eighteen and twenty uh, team leagues. Yeah, it's it's you know it's pretty standard just playing each other twice. There's not really anything creative that you can do. There's again, there's no way of making sure that the broadcasters get their four Celtic Rangers games. Um, really, apart from introducing something that would be very you know weird or silly. So, yeah, I I I, I certainly don't see this one coming along anytime soon. No. As I say, it's a, this one, we say it's a bit too radical, but it's it's like a, a very known and tried and tested format, just, you know, playing each other twice. But yeah, I think for what we've got currently, it, it wouldn't work. There's, I don't see a realistic avenue for yeah. it to happen. Yeah, and it would also obviously risk, um, you know, some some very small clubs coming up, you know, into, into the top flight um, that maybe just don't have the, you know, the capacity um to to kind of deal with you know big crowds and, yeah and a lot of eyes on them um yeah you're getting dangerously close to the territory that uh that so Falkirk the team as far obviously we we got denied promotion one year because Brockville didn't meet stadium requirements you run the risk of lots of teams so like a team that maybe doesn't have the infrastructure but having a really good season and it, it just gets messy and it creates a lot of resentment you know, when a team gets denied promotion for for something like that, because the argument is that the play on the park, the play on the pitch was good enough to get them promoted. And you've now denied them that because you don't think their the stadium is good enough. Do I sound bitter? Because <laughs> 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 Yeah. Yeah, that's abs- it was absolutely ridiculous that that, that, that happened. Um... I mean, at the end of the day, Brockville... As much as I love Brockville, it was unsafe. Um, <laughs> it was unsafe, but still, for for that to be the reason, like, and the option of ground sharing was denied us that season as well. Thankfully, for teams that came after us, things changed, um, and ground sharing did become an option for for teams. Um, but at the time, no, not for us. Okay, right. Well, I think we've kind of covered off most of our kind of options. Then I mean I'm sure there's yeah there's plenty of yeah. kind of variables and someone might be listening to this going what why haven't you discussed this but I think we've laid out there some real tangible realistic options on how this would work yeah one thing I would add on to that as well is that within all of the league setups that I've got I I don't see a place for B teams I don't like the idea of B teams in my view. B teams should be part of like the reserve league. Um, And so I've kind of removed reference to Celtic B, Rangers B, Hearts B from the Lowland League. And I would help that pathway for some of these other clubs to move up the pyramid without having it, having it get messy with not allowing a B team to get promoted and things like that. Um, Again, it's the way I see it working best is you've got your full structure and then you've got your res- reserve leagues that would kind of sit b- beneath these, but follow the similar structure to the parent, to the, like the parent leagues. Hmm. So any removal of those B teams um, as well to help with that that flow of clubs between the divisions um, would again be part of any league re- restructure in my view. Okay, good to know. All right, Graham, um, that has been absolutely brilliant. I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting about spreadsheets and mathematics and uh, <laughs> those are things i never thought uh, I, I would say uh, no you know it's yeah. it's 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 something that so many of us feel um you know quite passionate about and like we've said before this isn't moving heaven and earth there's clear examples of other countries that are doing very similar things that we could just copy and i think it would hugely improve um yeah, so, so so many things and just added a bit more excitement because you know it does get it can i don't know what i say does it can get a bit monotonous just you know going to the you know to the same uh playing the same team uh four four times a season um so just having yeah. those extra grounds to go to 
and you know having those extra promotion relegation places and you know having extra little splits and different incentives for finishing tops of the splits all that sort of stuff i think is um can only be a good thing i cannot really can only see positives about it yeah it's gonna it's gonna be exciting i mean you have a look at it last season some of the most exciting games played were in the lower division playoffs you got great viewing figures as far as i've been led to believe um for some of the uh, the lower league playoff games, and so there is a there is excitement around Scottish football, and it's not just in the, the Premiership. It's not just at the top of the Premiership between the old firm. There can be excitement everywhere throughout the game, and I think some of these proposals um, for a, a, a league reconstruction could help bring out some of that. Mm. Right. Well, before I let you go, Graham, uh, I'm going to ask you the magic wand question that I ask every guest. Um, so, yeah, if you had a magic wand and you could change one thing about Scottish football, what would it be? So I'm going to cheat a little bit. There's a few things that I would like to change, Lee Construction being one and like a full working pyramid. Um, obviously, my work with academies, I want better integration of the academy setups, better integration between the uh, JD performance school and professional academies i want to see a better pathway for women's football and more inclusion in the performance school for uh for girls um i want to see better promotion and coverage of the game like as per your previous episode you did um also i'd really love to see a reappropriation of wealth or something that could help close the gap between the old firm and the rest of scottish football but the main thing i would change the one my biggest gripe with scottish football just now is the 11-1 voting structure that's present within the Premier League um, I can't believe this because it puts me on the side of Michael Stewart which never happens but <laughs> historically it, that 11-1 voting structure has been one of the biggest blockers of change uh, and I would argue progress in Scottish football um, and again again, in my view it allows Rangers and Celtic to work in their own interest to keep themselves at the top of the Scottish game so I think if we were to scrap that 11-1 voting structure, it removes that capacity to um, vote tactically, and it could really help usher in some change. I think past reconstruction votes were denied, and it's denied by two teams, but in an article that, again, it's an old article that I was looking through doing some research for coming on to answer this question, um, the same two teams that would then vote against similar proposals like there's a proposal to change the 11-1 to a 9-3 and the same two teams that voted against reconstruction in the first place voted against the voting changes and so well this is it, it how how do you ever get how do you ever get rid of it if, if it's a, if it needs an 11 it, to 1 vote to get rid of the 11 to 1 vote somebody just needs to pull a u.s presidency and just use executive powers and push something through and say this is non-negotiable this is a change that's being made for the benefit of all not a few. Again, does anybody have the clout to do that in the Scottish game? Not currently, I would argue. Um, and with the governance that, again, with some of the governance we've seen in recent years, I don't see it happening. Um, I don't think anyone would try and force that through, unfortunately. Mm. So that's why I need my magic wand for that one. Yeah, that is, that is definitely a need of a magic wand. It's um, it's also worth saying, I think Aberdeen voted you know when when rangers were not in the top flight i think aberdeen voted with celtic um yeah. I, so they 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 also joined on that on that bandwagon which yeah and it's just a shame it, that it only takes one team to decide to partner up with somebody else and it could be for anything i mean i've kind of picked on the old firm but as i mentioned it could be any two teams if we're promo if we were advocating um going from 12 teams back down to 10 you'd find teams that are sitting 11th and 10th every season in the premiership saying, well, no, we vote against that. And that's it done. They keep 12 teams, they get to keep their position. So it could be any two teams for whatever reason, but it makes it very easy to stop any real change in Scottish football. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Graham, it's been a pleasure having you on. Thank you. Thank you. I've really enjoyed it the time i i love talking spreadsheets obviously <laughs> so do i now uh great okay well uh thanks uh, very much for coming on graham uh really enjoyed it and a big thank you to everyone who is listening